too many designers are spending their time where they are focused on performing rather than performance. And what I mean by that is that they're doing the job that their employers want them to do and are satisfied with them doing. And what that means to me is that they are pleasing the client and they're literally going in and doing the designer song and dance design thinking and you know putting post-its up on walls and speaking with all the lingo and things like that and they're not actually focused on what they should be doing which is problem solving and really making things better now usually what's happening here is they're doing what they're told because they're being paid you know and, and I understand that better than anyone you know that sometimes you just got to do what the client wants you to do and which is that but if you're truly problem solving then you would be more focused on performing rather than being a performer and you would actually be saying well what is the real business problem I'm trying to solve what, a, what is the issue here? And um, there's this guy, Luke, and I can't say his surname, so Luke W. And I'll put a link below. And he's been putting on some of his work at Google. And what impressed me about it is that it's such simple stuff that he's solving at Google. And he's like the head of design for Google or something like that. And you know the stuff that he's pointing out is just kind of so obvious but they have some real metrics and some really simple things so what I really want to encourage designers to do is to not just go in and oh well you want me to do this design so therefore I've done it and do you like it great signed off happy days instead you should be challenging at status quo of so you need this but what are you truly trying to solve because the client isn't generally thinking like that the client has assumed a certain something and written a, a brief in their mind that kind of goes a certain way but it isn't necessarily solving the real problem and uh, quite often some of these things aren't as flashy and and aren't like a complete redesign but sometimes just some rejigging um, and you know the other things that you could be doing is it's more than just just pushing stuff around the screen remember design is beyond just the pixels on the screen but also the way you deliver that content so quite often they could be saying you know it's users don't want to use our app and whatever and then you find out well it's because it takes really long to load so shouldn't you rather be focusing on well the app's pro design is probably fine but it needs to be optimized correctly so you should be trying to get better performance out of your app or your website and therefore actually it's got some more to do with speed of the consumption of information than it is oh the app doesn't work and people aren't signing up well you know if you start to understand how technically a lot of these things work you would understand why hey as quick as possible get something in front of people's eyes you know and there's things as a designer that you can do so to increase this performance that's outside of the IT department who are running the back end and, and things like that. You can uh, reduce the amount of fonts you use, you can reduce the amount of server requests, so you can you know reduce the amount of JavaScript required, you can you know optimize the images and things like that. So that's really where you should be focused and uh, Otherwise, it's things like Luke points out this amazing case of like, you know, the quite often we all hide the search bar um, behind a little icon on on your phone, and they've obviously gone and they've said, "Okay, oh, we can do it that way," or actually, we could just put a search bar just below the navigation bar, and hey, it's increased the amount of searches, and that's really what you should be doing.
So we're on our way to the movies. We're going to go watch uh, The First Man with Ryan Gosling. I quite enjoyed um, The First Man, which was the story of Neil Armstrong and the astronaut who first went to the moon. Um, it showed a series of the tests they did before they actually flew to the moon and then actually walking on the moon. It wasn't a huge Hollywood glamorous movie. And in, in kind of some sort of way, it was a bit depressing to be perfectly honest with you. It was quite sad to see how the kind of personal lives of the astronauts weren't the best. But it wasn't over Hollywood dramatized. That's that's the one thing I have to say. This movie was very, very authentic. And if you've ever been inside a military machine or something like that, that's really old, you'd know how tinny they were and how cold they were and things like that. And, and this movie managed to portray that for me. There was something, something really, really authentic about how you know, space uh, shuttles and space flight and everything seems super glamorous, but like, it wouldn't be. You, you would be sitting in a seat, there was no room for anything. You'd be sitting in a seat like away from a wall that is like right here with buttons and switches on and controls that don't work like modern stuff does work now. You know, everything we've got now is got this beautiful veneer on. So we've got this beautiful glossy Apple stuff. And so, there was something quite authentic to it. The thing that I, that I was quite um, intrigued by is the way that Ryan Gosling played um, Neil Armstrong. You know, because he's normally charming and he's the pretty boy and he's got that naughty smile and things like that. He didn't do any of that. And um, I then put myself in his shoes and said, okay, I'm Neil Armstrong and I'm a... I would assume, uh, I would assume some sort of a brilliant mathematician. I know he was pilot. Um, they would have had to have consumed a huge amount of data and, and stuff like that to be able to think the way they think. And I know myself as a creative and as somebody who I always said, well, I'm pretty extreme. Um, kind of all or nothing I'm um, you know and, and that yeah that that makes me kind of wonder you know how would his head have been he would have been constantly churning so he was very cold towards his wife very cold towards his kids and I don't know if that coldness was there because he might have died on any of his missions or whether he just had so much going on in his head and and i understand that i'm when i'm like in work mode and i'm trying to solve something i'm not the best person to be around i'm quite um antisocial i'm quite um I'm quite off I guess and and I'm a bit cold and, and I'm because I'm just so very focused on uh, what I'm trying to achieve but yeah I I do recommend watching the movie just don't expect a big Hollywood blockbuster it, because it's not that it's it's definitely got a more kind of authentic appeal to it and it's not all kind of space racy and the whole thing it's it's kind of more serious as to what they went through anyway give it a good watch the first man if you're into space things then there is a great series which is called the first and that is with sean penn and it's with them going to Mars and that's quite a good series if you want to watch that
doing my mornings um, in traffic quite a bit lately and uh, it's definitely not for me um, I'm far too impatient for morning traffic and uh, yeah I, I don't recommend it but you know you're sitting in here and, and you can be irritated which is you know I'm not uh, exempt from I certainly get irritated with things but you can be or you could kind of go hey I've got this time let me use it on me so while there isn't really the opportunity to meditate which would be ideal um, and I think there isn't the opportunity to kind of write a gratitude list it's quite difficult to write while you are driving it is a good opportunity to reflect on things it is a good opportunity to at least go through your gratitude in your head although I do believe writing it down is probably possibly uh, a better solution and then I guess you know you could utilize the time better it's a great time to learn so you've got audio books and podcasts I think it's a great way to get through the traffic um, and then I guess it's a pretty good time to vlog and uh, so I would need a little bit of help here but if you've got questions for me about design about careers about leadership about product about you know agencies in-house agencies anything like that I'd love to hear your questions so get on Twitter get on leave a comment below it would be great to answer your questions um, if it's anything design related I'm sure I would have something to say and at least offer up some point of view and pretty much you could ask me anything um, I don't really keep abreast with local or current news but I hear enough to at least have an opinion um, so yeah leave a comment down below Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, leave a comment and stay cool.